Hey everyone, Random Randy here. In today's tutorial, I am going to be showing you how to make the super simple and super quick protect your neck crochet cowl. It uses some very simple stitches. It's a great project for a beginner to teach somebody to crochet. It's great to fill up your table at craft fairs and it's awesome for last minute holiday gifting. So let's jump right in and get started. You're going to need some number five bulky weight yarn. In this case, I'm going to be using Loops and Threads Charisma yarn. This is the Dragonfly colorway. You're gonna need about a ball of it. You might need a little bit more depending upon how loose your stitches are. You're also going to need a nine millimeter hook. some scissors. I love these itty bitty tiny ones. They are super duper sharp and very good for fitting into a notions pouch. And you're also going to need a tapestry needle, probably one of the larger ones like this plastic monstrosity right here. This is a clover needle as well. So to get started, you're going to get your yarn somewhere where it's comfortable for you to work from. Personally, I find that it always seems to be the most efficient for me to have my yarn off to the left side as I am right-handed. So we're going to start off by making a slip knot about seven or eight inches from the end of the yarn. That way you have a tail to weave things together at the end. Got a slip knot gonna put it on your hook and tighten it down so that it's snug but not so tight that it can't slide and we are going to make a chain that is 30 inches long with the size that my stitches are my gauge with this size hook and this size yarn that is 60 stitches and then you're going to add two to whatever your total is so to make a chain stitch, you wrap the yarn over, pull the hook through, wrap the yarn over, pull the hook through, and apparently my wrists are going to snap like Rice Krispies. So go ahead and make your chain that is 30 inches long. So now I have made my 60 chains and I'm going to make one, two more. And now you're going to begin the pattern. This is super duper simple. You're gonna love how quick it is. So we're going to half double crochet all the way down the end of the row, starting in the third chain from your hook. So one, two, three, and to make a half double crochet, you yarn over, put your hook through the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. So you have three, yarn over, pull through all three. One more half double crochet, yarn over, into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Now you're going to do that with every chain all the way down to the end. And at the end, you should have whatever your chain count was before you added your last two chains. So go ahead and half double crochet all the way to the end of the row and I will meet up with you once you have finished that.
So now that we have completed the last half double crochet in our first row, we're going to chain two and turn and we are going to double crochet through the back loop only. Now, unfortunately, this part of the yarn is black, so this is probably gonna be a little bit rough to see, but we will do our best here, and hopefully you can grasp what I'm trying to show you and tell you, and I will show you again once it's back to a lighter color yarn. So, chain two, turn. Now we're going to double crochet in the back loop only for the entire row. So, the back loop, when you are looking at a crochet stitch, here I'll show you on a lighter one so you can actually see it. Where's a lighter one? There we go, perfect. All right, so, when you are working in the back loop only, you will be working in the second part of the V that you can see from the top of the stitch, it will be the part that is farther away from you. So just to demonstrate where you'll actually be able to see it, you do a double crochet, which is yarn over, go through the top of that back loop, yarn over, pull up a loop so you have three on the hook, yarn over one more time, you're going to pull through the middle two, yarn over, pull through the last two. And that is how you do a back loop only double crochet. So I'm going to undo that one just to get back into the actual pattern here. So I'm going to be repeating that process with every stitch all the way across to the end of this row. and do your back loop only double crochets all the way to the end of the row and I will meet up with you at the end. So now we're finally almost at the end of the row here. There's two stitches left. So I'm going to show you a little bit better close up here of the back loop only double crochet. So as I said before, yarn over, put it through the under the back bar of that stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the center two, yarn over, pull through the center two. One more time, yarn over, through only the back bar of the V, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, through the middle two, yarn over, through the middle two. So as you can see, it is getting quite lengthy, but that's because it's meant to wrap completely around your neck. So you might be able to notice there's a little bit of a ribbed detail going on here, and it's really simple to achieve. That is done just by going through the back loop only. So now we're going to be repeating that second row, which is just chain two, turn, back loop only double crochet all the way to the end until the cowl is as wide as you want it to be. I have found that the best width for an adult is 7.5 to 8 inches wide. So go ahead and get going on that. I'm gonna chain two, and just double crochet through the back loop only, all the way down. So have at that for a few rows, and once your cowl is the width you want it to be, then we'll do some edging and finish it off. So, now that you have made the cowl the width that you want it to be, in my case I ended up doing nine rows total the first row that was the half double crochet and then eight rows of the back loop only double crochet that made it as wide as i want it to be so it'll completely cover my neck and now still keeping your yarn attached 
We're gonna do a little decorative edge on here and then we're gonna sew it together. We're gonna be working down the short side now. So we're just gonna be doing single crochets down this short side to start with. So in order to do that, we're gonna chain one. Looking at the side of the stitch, you're gonna end up with about two single crochets per double crochet, just because a single is so much smaller. So we're going to put a single crochet right here to start with. And then another single crochet in the second part of the stitch. Here. The placement isn't really super critical. You just want to make sure that you're not skipping too much because then you'll end up with it pulling the end of your cowl in weird ways. So since I ended up with nine rows at about two stitches per row, I should end up with 18 single crochets ish once it's all said and done this is a very forgiving pattern it's something that is very easy to modify it's very easy to fudge it if you do make a mistake somewhere so don't be afraid to dive in with your hook and just get going and try something. You don't have to be perfect with your stitch count or anything. And we'll do one right in there on the end. So now we have the green along the sides here. And we're going to do a reverse single crochet along this same edge. Reverse single crochet is also referred to as the crab stitch and it is very simple. It feels really weird at first because you're working backwards, but it gives it a really nice, pretty decorative edge. So just like with a regular single crochet, we're going to chain one and instead of turning like you normally would and then working into the back you're going to work right back down into that first stitch so you're going to go in from the top you're going to grab your yarn pull it up you want to do this a little bit loosely so there's a little bit of give then you yarn over and pull right through it so carry on to the next stitch go in through the top grab the yarn pull up a loop yarn over pull it through it's going to look weird and bunched up at first just trust me that by the time you get through to the end of it and you give it a couple of tugs it's going to look really nice and you probably won't be able to go this fast i've kind of developed a love affair with crab stitch, so I've gotten very used to doing it in edgings for a lot of my projects. I actually also used this edging on my Forest Fairy Boho Pixie Hood that there's also a video tutorial for if you're interested in another quick project that is also a yarn eater. Now we're to the last one. And now we have a few different ways that we can finish this. So as you can see, the edge is kind of pulled in just a little bit. So give it a couple of tugs to straighten it out and see it gives it this nice ridged look. So now to sew the cowl together, we've got a few different options as to how you want it to go. I'm gonna leave my yarn attached because I am going to clip it off, but I wanna show you a few different ways first. So what you're gonna be doing is taking your crab stitched edge, and this is gonna go on top. So you're gonna be looping the cowl around, and 
you're going to match up this short edge with the long edge. That is opposite. And then you're going to just whip stitch it together. So you're gonna need a piece of yarn that is long enough to do so. And I also like to stitch this edge together. If you'd like and you don't have that much yarn left or you just don't want it to be attached, you want it to be functional, you can also install buttons along this edge here and just stick them through the pre-existing holes at various stages. I'm not going to put buttons on this, but I will show you a few that have buttons on them once we finish sewing this up. So going to leave a fairly decent tail and we did also leave the tail from before so that's going to help. Leave a tail that's for the sake of having extra to weave in we'll say about two feet long. Snip it off and if you're lucky you might have a little teeny ball of yarn left over like I do you can save for a scrap project or in case you don't have quite enough for another project with the similar type of yarn. Set that off to the side and grab tapestry needle. And just to make sure this stitch is secure so everything doesn't unravel, I'm just gonna do a slip stitch and pull it all the way through. And now you don't have to worry about things coming undone because that would be horrible after all that time spent. So there's no real complicated method to twisting this. You just take it from being flat, flip the top side, and you're going to place it right on here like this. If you really, really want to and you're a super stickler for things, then you could pin it or use clips. I don't really think that this bulky yarn needs that, but if you're nervous about it, by all means, do what you need to do. So I am going to whip stitch these two together about halfway up the width of the cowl on the short side, the short side that's not attached to the yarn. And a whip stitch is just where you hold it together and you loop it through from the bottom all the way to the top. go around from the bottom and up through the top again. Just do that for a few until you've got it secure where you want it to be. halfway point. If you'd like, you can take it all the way up the width of the one you're attaching it to. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to weave it through in and out in the bottom portion and pull the yarn through so we can stitch the other side down. You want to make sure that when you do that, you don't pull it too tight because it will make it pucker. 
So in this case, I'm actually not going to whip stitch. I'm going to just go up and down in between here rather than just going around the edge so I don't mess up my pretty crab stitch we've got going on here. Just go up through the top, right up through here. Back down through the next. Up through the bottom. Down through the next. So you want it to be snug, but like I said, you don't want to pull it so tightly that it makes your work pucker. And as this is a bulky yarn, it is pretty forgiving, so you don't need to yank it super tight anyway. It's fluffy, it fills in the spaces, it's fine. one here and we're just gonna go down through pull it through the back flip it over and weave it in so for weaving in I like to go through and tie several partial knots so that it's less likely to come unraveled as you can see I've got a loop here and instead of just pulling it through put the yarn back through it and pull it down snug and then continue to just go through a few spots here and there back and forth You want to make sure while you're weaving it in that you continue to pull the work out straight or you end up with puckers. So I'm going to pull this through, pull it down snug. I did end up with a little bit more than I needed for weaving it in, but that's fine. So I'm going to tie another knot in the end here. You want to get it as close to the work as possible. Snug it right down there and snip it right off. So then I'm going to take the end that was left over from the beginning, thread that on the needle and weave it in in similar fashion to what we just did with the last one. your neck cowl is now complete and as you can see even though it is attached on the end this opens wide to put your head in and that is pretty much that let me also show you 
one that has buttons so you can make a comparison and decide if that's a decorative touch you want to add or not. This one is also made with Charisma yarn and as you can see it's got three big chunky buttons on the end here. So really you can make it your own however you want. Aside from using bulky yarn you could also use two strands of worsted weight yarn with the same size hook and make it in any awesome color combination that you'd like. So thank you so much everybody for watching and I hope you enjoy keeping your neck cozy with this chilly weather we've got coming up. Don't forget to drop the video a like, subscribe if you'd like to see more crafty content like this, and click the notification bell so you don't miss an upload. Thanks so much for watching everybody. Bye!